Hello Sagittarius, welcome to this 2021-2022 year-end review. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. So keep in mind guys, this is a general reading. Yeah, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Um, but also, the this reading can be viewed from your sun, moon, and rising sign. Okay, obviously those are going to be most likely the most accurate, especially with your rising sign being at the top of the list. However, uh, my intention with these readings here, especially since it's a, 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 a year-end review, um, you could watch this from any sort of placement. So like wherever you have, or I'm sorry, whatever whatever you have, whatever whichever planet you have placed in Sagittarius or whatever, whatever this could potentially resonate for you, okay? Um, but keep in mind, the top three, sun, moon, and rising, especially your rising, is going to be the most accurate, yes? Um, so we're going to get into a look at what the year of 2021 has been for you. And then we're going to look at what the year of 2022 could bring forward for you. Again, keep in mind, this is a general reading. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and then we're going to close out the reading with some Oracle guidance from the earth warriors deck. Yes. <sighs> okay. Sagittarius, let's just get into this here. My Saggies. Yes. Excellent. Okay. Here we go. So, Sag, I am going to give this five shuffles for you. Let's look at what 2021 has been for you. Yes? Five shuffles here. This is one. For my Sagittarians, for any placement that you like, this is two. What has 2021 been like for Sagittarius? This is three. Four. And five. All right, Sag. So let's dive into this. Yes, what has 2021 been like for Sagittarius? What messages do we have for Sagittarius in terms of the realm of 2021? All right, Sag. So you seem to be right in alignment with, with everybody else. The big general theme here, the big general theme for the whole collective for the year of 2021 has been overcoming certain obstacles that stood in the way of your own true personal authenticity. Okay. For you, Sag, the first card that came out is the Hierophant in reverse. So this is a direct rejection of societal standards, societal understandings, the status quo, uh, maybe even uh, the institution of religion. The 2021 could have been the year that you really let go of some sort of I a religious ideology that you may have been holding on to over the course of your lifetime. Um, and for Sag for you, Sag, especially for my sun, moon, and rising, especially especially for my rising Sagis, uh, I feel like this is actually uh, very deeply personal for you. Okay, and with that has come the Five of Cups. So. Sagittarius, you're a very expansive energy, okay? You are the ruler of the ninth house, and the ninth house represents philosophical ideas. Uh, well, you as a Sagittarian, this energy of Sagittarius represents philosophy, okay? If there is any key word that you could relate Sagittarius to, it's philosophy, right? Uh, so as the ruler of the ninth house, the ninth house represents things that are alien to you, we could say. So this would represent... Um, uh, cultural differences, learning about new new cultures and all that kind of stuff, um, experiencing like like traveling, right? Like going to new countries or just like even even if it's just going to a different state or a different town, it's it's whatever that is starkly different from your core reality, your core sense of being or core understanding. Okay. Also, Sagittarius is a very spiritual energy yes but Sagittarius can also be a very religious energy in some situations and for some of you here there are certain religious ideologies that have like run the gamut through your family your your lineage that you seem to have confronted over the course of 2021 and have released 
okay? 2021 feels like that year where you really let yourself release something that no longer resonated for you. However, I will say that if it, it, it I, yes, I said it no longer resonates for you, but Sag, it never really resonated for you. There were certain reasons why you accepted this and that it has a lot to do with your family is what I'm picking up on, or at least just what you were taught in the early years of your life. There was a certain camaraderie there also that I'm feeling that made this separation or the detachment from this energy extra harsh for you personally. And thus we have the Five of Cups. Now, the Five of Cups doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing, Sag, because yes, there are three cups here that have spilled out that are cause for mourning, right? But all is not lost because there are still two cups behind this individual on the card. So that means literally that all is not lost. It means that you will have need to have grieved or at least let yourself go through a grieving period to release whatever is being let go of or is taken from you. But ultimately, what this, whatever was removed from your life or whatever it is you felt you lost, especially on a certain ideological level, it is giving rise to or is making way for the truth of the core of your being, who you are at the core of yourself the hermit, okay? And you have that with the Six of Cups. Yeah, the Six of Cups is here. Um, and the Six of Cups fell face down. So I didn't see that until I just flipped it over, but that makes perfect sense because that's exactly like literally what we were saying here, right? Overall energy for you is the Queen of Swords to the Ten of Swords to the Page of Swords to the Ace of Swords. Woo, to the King of Wands also. And then the Emperor, emperor. whoa, Sag, the Emperor and then the Devil. And then the Queen of Wands, wow. And Judgment, yes. Okay, stops there at judgment. Okay, this is all a good thing. Why? Because the Queen of Swords here represents that level of understanding that allows you to break yourself free, that allows you to end a certain toxic or ridiculously tumultuous or painful situation. Queen of Swords to the Ten of Swords. To the Page of Swords, to the Ace of Swords. So I feel like, Sag, there is an energy here of you seeking out the truth with the Page of Swords and the Ace of Swords. But really, the Page of Swords represents that energy of you seeking out the truth or seeking out what is really going on here underneath the surface, okay? The Ace of Swords represents that truth that you were ultimately able to find. And then because of that, there was a level of authority that came through, King of Wands to the Emperor, okay? Something about what it is you learned, what it, what it is you discovered, what it is you experienced over the course of 2021, something about it, and I feel like it's the element of release, letting go, that has allowed you to get into an extremely confident space and a space of, I know who it is that I am and I know who it is that I want and I have the boundaries to get it, the emperor. And that emperor energy is directly, really, is di literally, wow, directly facing the devil, which is the toxicity of the past, the bindings, the social contracts, and all that, 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 that toxic alignment that was never really truly in alignment with you. You just accepted it because so and so told you so, right? And then underneath that is the Queen of Wands. And it feels like the Emperor and the King of Wands is coming forward to protect the energy that the Queen of Wands represents for you, which is your new, in essence, your new, but not really new, technically your true alignment. Because it was time for you to get involved with that. It was time for you to accept that. It was time for you to rise up into that judgment. Beautiful, Sag. Now y'all know Ever since, I, and I keep, I keep talking about this, and I, sometimes I feel like a broken record, <laughs> but ever since that one reading that I did for you in 2019, in which the title was, Damn It, Sad You Made Me Cry, you guys, as far as I'm concerned, as a reader and a challenger, a uh, uh, challenger, ooh, channeler though, is what I meant to say, you guys have really been evolving big, 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 big time, and I can't escape that. Every time I channel... Sagittarian energy, that's what I get for you, okay? This is a big step forward for you, Sagittarius, and this is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Okay, let's move forward. Let's see, we're gonna move to our second deck here. 
Let's see what 2022 is looking like for you. Yeah? Five shuffles. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. So, what is 2022 looking like for you, Sagittarius? My Sagittarius. Yeah? Here we go. <laughs> First card out is that Queen of Swords again, Sag. And it's cross... Oh, my goodness. Whoa. So... Honestly, Sag, I don't even think I want to pull any more. You only have two cards here, plus the card that's at the bottom of the deck. But like I said, the first card out is that Queen of Swords. And if you remember, the Queen of Swords was the overall energy at the bottom of the deck for 2021, right? So in terms of 2022, it looks like you're keeping that alignment. It looks like you're keeping that focus. And when this came out here, it fell crossed on top of the Hermit, which is saying to me, now the Hermit is coming from the 2021 view, right? And what this is saying to me is that you are going to keep your alignment no matter what the cost. Because you are determined to maintain the ending of these old cycles, the world. And then your overall energy at the bottom of the deck is the Knight of Pentacles. Oh my God, the Knight of Pentacles to the Ten of Swords again to the Magician, Sagittarius. Holy moly. You are bound and determined to manifest the new in your life. To have changed this alignment, which you achieved over the year of 2021, and to maintain this change in alignment throughout the course of your life moving forward. 2022 is going to big be a big focus for this because you're really going to need to work diligently. I don't want to say work hard. I want to say work diligently, Knight of Pentacles, in order to maintain this new focus you've come to or this new alignment that you've come to. You're not even trying to fight with the past energies, yeah. You're not even trying to fight with the past energies. Seven of Wands in reverse to the Five of Wands. I don't even see you interacting with that any longer. I'm sorry, Seven of Wands in reverse, Five of Wands, Three of Cups, right? The, th <clears throat> the Three of Cups can be symbolic of the devil energy. The Three of Cups can be a hive mind mentality. A hive mind mentality, especially in the realm of maintaining a sense of happiness which is not real okay but because everyone else is vibing with it because everyone else feel or says they feel it because everyone else it believes in it well then i'm just going to go with it too that's the three of cups energy sometimes that's what this represents for you here but notice that after the three of cups you have the ten of pentacles the situation is done and you are bound and determined to move forward, Six of Swords. Underneath the Six of Swords is the Knight of Wands. There you are, Sagittarius. You are a brand new person. And you have every right to feel proud about that. To feel proud of that, Sag. I... What, what do I do? I am Eric and I condone this message. Because I'm proud of you. Oh shit, now I'm gonna cry. I'm very proud of you, Sag. Couldn't be any more proud. And I don't say this from the point of view of like, oh, I'm like a proud parent or some shit. No, fuck that. I'm a proud friend. I am proud to know you. I am proud to have been able to read for you over the last two years as you have made this transformation, Sagittarius. Words cannot put that into true expression. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, let's close this out. Earth Warriors, yes? Closing message for you, Saji. Five shuffles. One. Two.
three. Four. And five. Cool. Ha! <laughs> Okay, I was being guided to look at the bottom of the deck and you do have Aloha Ke Akua. Blessings of the divine spirit, the divine being. I'm sorry, blessings of the supreme being. I'm not gonna read the card, but take these words. Blessings of the supreme being. Take them and let them resonate. Let them marinate within you. Because just like I'm proud of you as a friend, the supreme being is proud of you as well. And you need to know that. And you must allow yourself to acknowledge that within you, okay? Supreme Being is so proud of you. You have overcome so much. Not just over the course of this year, 555 five, five on the counter, Sag. Not just over the course of this year, but your whole fucking lifetime. Closing message. Okay, you have card number 15, Ajna Durga, power of the good, or power of good. No, 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 power of the good. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Now, 15 boils down to a six, and one of the big energies for your life in terms of the year of 2022 is the six of swords moving forward. You need never lose faith in the power of good. You need never lose faith in how much you can accomplish as an, as an independent and inspired individual in this world. You need never believe that you are alone or without divine protection. You need never fear evil. The third eye of the divine mother sees all things, is ever watch, watchful and ever just. She births through holy vision, the manifest power of good in all realms. Her gaze is upon you now. Trust her. In a reading, this card says, Believe in the power of the divine to keep an eye on things for you. Trust that power to alert you when you need to know something or to understand what is happening in your life and what you need, even if you aren't so sure of that yourself at times. Be active in contesting negativity. The moment you feel something isn't coming from love, from love, Acknowledge it immediately. You don't have to make it about you or analyze it. Use your divine connection to deal with it promptly and effectively. Call for divine support in all things. You will not divert help away from someone else if you ask for it yourself. When you allow yourself to be helped, this empowers your path, which, in turn, helps all beings. Divine assistance is always there for you unconditionally. If you are not thinking the best thoughts, divine support will correct your thoughts. Never hesitate to call for that support. It is your greatest ally. Give up your attachment to past experiences of rejection and abandonment so that you can open up to how much the divine loves you and can help you. Patience, or I'm sorry, practice feeling the confidence and unconditional trust in a higher power, knowing it is stronger than all else. There you have it, Satch. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you have a fantastic end of your year. And I encourage you to really look forward to the future because things are looking much brighter, okay? I love you. If you guys want a personal reading with this specific spread, just hit me up. My email is in the description box below. I would be very happy to set you up with one. But with that said, I hope you have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Take care. Mwah! Bye. <laughs>